Hello, I'm Penny Thornton and welcome to my video channel where I talk a lot about astrology, usually focused on the coming week, the coming two weeks, the most important configurations, the important developments. Globally, we'll look at how these uh, uh, influences uh, may uh, manifest and we'll also look at it obviously in the personal sense. So my subject for this video is mainly the new moon in Pisces, but it's so much more than that. As I speak to you, it's about 24 hours before Mercury turns retrograde. And this happens three or four times a year, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but it can be very inconvenient. And uh, we're going to be looking at that in a minute, but also I want to talk about um, the sun's entry into Pisces. And I know you like to know when this is because it's just always interesting, but also you may have friends who have babies at this time or no babies being born, and you want to know whether they're Aquarians or Pisceans. So the sun moves into Pisces at 4.46 in the morning, UTC time. Uh, that means it's just before midnight on the eastern seaboard of America, and it'll be in the middle of the afternoon if you're over there in Sydney. Now, um, of course, you know, I always say this, that you can't be two signs. I know people have a lot of trouble with this. They think, oh, I was born on the cusp, so I'm a little bit Aquarius, so I'm a little bit Pisces. No, you're either Aquarius or your Pisces. So this is very important. This is why we astrologers need to know the time of birth, not just for the sun sign, but just also so that we can set everything into its right perspective. Right now, as Mercury is poised to go retrograde and will go retrograde next week, it's very close to the planet Neptune. Now, if for instance, there is, uh, you know, some baby being born this week. When you look at the chart, when you raise the chart, it's going to have a Mercury-Neptune conjunction. And that's a really very interesting conjunction because on the one hand, it breeds inspiration. It's uh, uh, very artistic. It's very sensitive. It's very intuitive, uh, possibly even psychic. But also it can be very kind of elusive and evasive and uh, perhaps directionless sometimes. Uh, Neptune is a very complicated uh, planet. And when we look at what's going on with Mercury being very close to Neptune and about to turn retrograde, um, we have the possibilities at the moment for um, amazing acts of compassion and selflessness and enlightenment, but at the same time, the climate is perfect for sort of lies and treachery and uh, general foggy circumstances. And when I look out on the world, and the main one of the main issues at the moment is the coronavirus, uh, virus COVID 19, which is so incredibly Neptunian, so very, very mysterious. We really, really don't know a lot about it. Um, and even the facts surrounding who's got it, where it was, and how many mortalities there have been, it's all cloaked in kind of mystery. Um, so that's, you know, the, the main topic of the time reflecting Mercury Neptune influence. Um, what will also be interesting is that as Mercury goes backwards, it will cross back into Aquarius on March the 3rd, and then it will enter uh, or it will enter back into Pisces after the 10th when it turns direct. So I'm also looking forward to um, the period of just before Easter, we're looking at April the 4th, when that Mercury-Neptune conjunction will be exact. Remember, we're now looking at about six weeks time. So the events of the moment, whether they're in your life or the events that we're seeing on our new screens, they'll have some kind of denouement or some important resolution or unfoldment by the time we get to that pre-Easter period. And in fact, that period is chock full of really, really important influences. Mars square, Uranus, and the big, big Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. So that's going to be a similarly dynamic, controversial, tempestuous period. 
as it was in the middle to late period of January. Obviously, we're not going to get an identikit uh, uh, set of experiences, although some things may repeat a little, may get more news on those big no news stories then, um, because in a way we're dealing with slightly different kind of influences. The other thing about this retrograde Mercury passage is that we might also find it interesting to go back to the last time Mercury was retrograde because that period has a relationship with this one and we need to be looking at the 30th of October through to the 20th of November so that the decisions you made, the events that happened, are now up for review and revision. And this is a good thing, isn't it? I mean, we get to think, did we do the right thing? Maybe we can change our minds, do things differently. That's why that's important. And it's quite powerful to be able to think of a retrograde Mercury giving you that potential to rethink something. However, that also means everyone else has an opportunity to rethink and revise, which is why sometimes in a retrograde Mercury, we get someone saying, you know, I've, I've changed my mind. So all that is in the uh, woodwork. There's also another very interesting thing that's uh, going on at the moment, and that's in the sort of grouping of the planets. Now, mostly uh, when we're looking at um, the really big events in our lives, the things that tend to be life shaping and the same really with events in the, the wider world. We're looking for the planets beyond uh, Mars. So we're looking at Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, this bunch of planets. So this bunch of planets is in a kind of third of the horoscope. We've got another two thirds with nothing in it. And now, because the Sun and Mercury and Mars and Venus, and you know, that we're all clustered in this tight little frame. And that's very interesting on so many levels. If somebody is born and you've got this kind of shaping, it's called a bundle shape, so you've got all these planets grouped in one section of the horoscope, it usually indicates that you're a specialist. You're someone who's going to like to do things one at a time, to be very focused on what you do, and perhaps um, not necessarily liking a huge amount of change in life. Now, of course, if you had the moon in Gemini, it would make a huge difference, wouldn't it? Because Geminis love change. But Broadly speaking, that bundle shaping is the shaping of a specialist. And the effect it has on all of us at the moment is that need to hunker down. And you can probably relate to that. You can probably think, you know, I have been thinking about that. I've wanted to be close to home. I've wanted to have my close network of friends and family around me. I've wanted to, I've wanted to be really closely involved with a couple of things. I, I haven't wanted to spread myself out very much. And really, in a way, we have a perfect example of this it's going on in the world right now with the idea of quarantine. I mean, there's a huge, I mean, how many people are in quarantine, hunkered down, separated from the rest of the world? And I think this is a really interesting expression of this kind of chart shaping that we have. Of course, it will change and everything will move forward again. And, uh, but it is one of the interesting things that uh, I'm, I'm looking at at the moment. So on to the moon in Pisces, the new moon in Pisces. We get um, 13 new moons a year and uh, well, sometimes only 12, uh, but usually we only get one new moon in a sign uh, each month. I don't want to get into why we sometimes get two, but it's the difference in the calendar and the 28 day cycle and all of that. But just bear with me in this idea of only going to get one new moon in Pisces this year. Now, this of course is important for Pisceans because all Pisceans will be starting a new chapter and that during the next couple of weeks after that new moon, there's going to be new possibilities opening up. Um, and of course, if you're born on the new moon, which is uh, on that Sunday, then, um, you know, that's the Sunday, the 23rd, then that's going to be really uh, imprinted in your solar chart, your solar return chart. It's going to influence the year ahead, making it a very pioneering kind of year. But that new moon in Pisces is significant for us all. 
Now, Pisces, in terms of the zodiac, is the last sign of the zodiac. We've been through 11 signs, and now we're here at number 12. And this is sometimes why it's called, unfairly, I have to say, the dustbin of the zodiac, because everything gets put in there. It's a whole cycle of experience. We've been through every sign of the zodiac, and we've been through that experience. We've uh, we've understood it. We've learned things. We've experienced it. And now we're constellating everything. We're it's a, a point of dissolution, if you like. We're getting rid of some things we don't want. We're going to uh, cycle, recycle some others, and it is a real distillation of information and what happens of course is at this point that the sun is going to give way to Aries in uh, towards the end of March around about the 20th of March so in this cycle from the new moon on through the full moon to the arrival of the sun in Aries we're going to be all of us in some way doing a lot of that processing is what I call psychic housekeeping and there's a reason for this, um, not just because Pisces itself is a very psychic, intuitive, sensitive, otherworldly sign, but because Pisces has an affinity with the 12th house and the 12th house of the zodiac is the seat of the unconscious mind. And that to me is absolutely the powerhouse of the zodiac. You know, whatever seeds are planted are planted in the seeds of the unconscious mind and eventually make it out into reality. It's like our peripheral vision. The things that are happening that our conscious awareness isn't aware of, our peripheral awareness is, and that's all going into the unconscious mind to be processed and sifted housekeeping um, so that we're going to be able to use that it will come to us in dreams and insights so it's a very very important process and i would say this new moon in pisces for all of us is the opportunity for a psychic reboot and you know sometimes that word psychic gets misused and we think of it only in terms of being able to see the future or being mediumistic and being in tune with the unseen but really the psyche we all have a psyche every single one of us and um the psyche is this powerhouse and the idea that we're rebooting it but we are going to have to get rid of a lot of things it's a period of dissolution so a lot of other things are being um you know got rid of things that we don't need ideas we don't need feelings we don't need and in preparation for a new cycle to begin now um i think what i also want to say and it is about the way that the horoscope is at the moment, the way all the planets are grouped, the new moon in Pisces, Mercury retrograde, strong Neptune influence, all these kind of things packaged together means that it is kind of a, a weird time. And over the next couple of weeks, it may seem extra weird. Um, whether what's happening to us is um, sort of rather pleasurably weird, you know, running into people you haven't seen for 20 years, coincidences that make you think, ah, that's not a coincidence, it's a synchronicity, it's meaningful, it's destiny, it's uh, kismet, that kind of thing, but also weird in the sense that it may seem as though something's gone really, really wrong. It, you can't understand why it's got wrong, but it just doesn't feel right. So that's in our own personal experience. We might feel as though we've lost the plot a bit. We can't really hold the reins of our life together as, uh, as we might like. But we've got to remember that this is a passage. We're not going to be stuck with it forever. It's a passage. And there are ways to handle a passage when things are sort of out of our control and seriously weird. And of course, that amounts to what's going on out there on the world stage, which we can never control. You know, those events happen and we're sitting on our, you know, we're sitting down looking at them thinking, what? what? So, but also, as I said, in our own lives, it may feel as though things are slipping away from us, that we can't really grasp the point of something, that we're losing a connection with someone. So the thing to do is, as, as I'm saying, is, is not to panic about this, is to see it as a process, as something we are working our way through. And I think 
two things I want to say, two little principles that might hold, you know, really true for us and help us through these next uh, few weeks, which are a little bit uh, slippery and foggy, to say the least. One of them is, uh, and it's a real cliche, but it's a cliche because it's true. And that is, there's a reason for everything. And even though it's sometimes difficult to say that, especially if something's happened and you really don't like what's happened, but there is a reason for everything. And the other thing is, and this is so important, it's work with what you've got, work with what you know. Don't work on the principle of maybes, and mites, whether those are the possibilities that could be fabulous or the possibilities that could be really worst case scenarios, ignore them, only work with what's absolutely in front of you and what you know for sure. And that way we will all in our own ships get over this rather uncertain sea crossing where we can't really control our ship we have to trust it to know it's going in the right direction and also I think to look for meaning and purpose both in the random things that happen to us but also in the things that we also uh, bring about ourselves or we have as I say a little bit more I don't use that word control because I don't think we have that much control at the moment but if we you know have that ability to both trust it, but also to only work with the things that we know and the things that we uh, that we have in front of us. So thank you for watching. I hope you've taken a lot of this on board. And the next time I'll speak to you, we'll be speaking about the full moon because this is all part of this very important Pisces experience for us all. Thank you for watching. And I look forward to being with you again next time. Bye for now.